there's a point at which the unfortunate and the infamous are associated and confounded into a single word, a fatal word, the miserable. The sickness of a nation does not kill man. To doctor is to do a great deal. To enlighten is to do still more. Nevertheless, those of us who study the health of society must now and again shake our heads. This is one of imagination. The month is October. A man traveling on foot has just entered the town. No one knew him. No one wanted to know him. Why should they? Why should they indeed? Why should anyone want to know me? His name, Jean Valjean, recently freed from prison. His term, 19 years. His crime, stealing a loaf of bread to feed his widowed sister and her large family. Where am I to go? That's what I always ask. Somewhere else, that's what, they, that's what they always answer. Somewhere else. Where do I find this land of somewhere else?
my present There's no one who remembers my name And no one I can trust The years have passed so slowly And now it's finally Someone hear my cry. Where shall I go? All paths are blocked before me. What should I do? The future is so bleak. Who will care for? No one seems to notice or hear my cry. My good woman, you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm sleeping here. Or trying to. On the ground? For 19 years I've slept on a wooden mattress. What difference does it make? Were you a soldier? <laughs> yes, a soldier. What is the name of this town? Dean. To me, one town looks just like the other. Well, why don't you go to an inn? I have no money. Hmm. Alas. Four sous in my pocket. <laughs> That's better than nothing. But four sous won't pay for lodging at an inn. You can't possibly spend the night here on the ground. You must be cold and hungry. I'm no stranger to cold and hunger. <laughs> well, surely someone will take you in out of charity. I've knocked at every door. I've been turned away everywhere. Have you knocked at that door? No. Then do. Around the little path. You'll find the door. Go on, do as I say. Why not? What's one more door slammed in my face? I can't understand why you haven't heard. You know, everything that transpires in this town, and why shouldn't you? I see my prayers are going to have to wait. What is it, back to see? There's a dangerous beggar in town. He's been seen. And being seen's a crime? Probably a gypsy. They say he goes from house to house trying to get lucky. They say he has a terrible look on his face. A terrible look, my mind. Something awful happened tonight. Everyone says so. Well, if everyone says so, it must be true. You think I'm silly. We need locks in the doors. A town like this buried in the mountains with not a single lantern in the streets. Any gypsy could just go. The gypsy. The door's already open. I mean no harm to anyone. You're welcome in my house. Madness. Look, my name is Jean Valjean. I'm a convict on pro. There, brother, what did I tell you? Be quiet, Baptistine. They let me out four days ago, and I've barely eaten since. I'm on my way to Pontalier. That is a great distance. We have to see some food for our guest. Guest? When I came to this town, I went to an inn. I had to show them my prison papers. It's the law. I know. If I don't show them my prison papers, they can send me back. No papers are required here. I also tried another inn, and the woman told me to clear out. I tried the jail, and the doorkeeper wouldn't open. I crawled into a dog kennel, and the drunk drove me out just as if he were a man, and knew who I was. I can't wash away the stink of prison. I thought I'd sleep under a field of stars, but there weren't any stars, and it looked as if it was going to rain. Then later on in the street, and a good woman told me to try here. She did right. Hmm. <laughs> Wine. Some wine for our guest. His sort is used to water. A glass of wine for our guest. You'll have to excuse my sister. Kindness, I fear, is not one of her virtues. I didn't tell the good woman I was an ex-convict. 
She thought I was a soldier. She gave me for a suit. But I have money. Money I earned from 19 years of hard work in prison. Thank you, Baptist. <coughs> so what is this place? Is it an inn? I'm ready to pay. I don't care how much. I've owned it in how many leagues, and I'm very tired. You are welcome to stay here, Monsieur Valjean. Monsieur? You just call me Monsieur? Weren't you listening? I'm a convict. This is my parole. Read it. Five years of robbery of the violence. Four tedious or four attempts to escape. A very dangerous man. This is my tattoo. This brand from convict, convict, convict. I've seen such markings before. Well, there you go. Will you turn me up? Or will you let me stay? Do you have a stable or a barn? I have a room with a bed, and you are welcome to stay there. You mean it? You won't throw me out? You're a good man. <laughs> You're an innkeeper, aren't you? I'm a priest, and this is where I live. Ha! <laughs> a priest? But of course, I didn't notice your cleric's cap. You're a human, Monsieur Lequeur. You don't despise people. Oh, oh, forgive me, can I keep my eyes open? Then sleep is what you need. Yes. <laughs> a good night's sleep in a real bed. In the morning, I'll be a new man. Oh. Here, take this candle. Down the hall, you'll find your room. The candlestick is heavy. It is silver. <laughs> silver? I'm not used to such a luxury. Have a good night's sleep, Monsieur Bajan. Before you leave in the morning, you must have some fresh warm milk from our cows. Fresh warm milk? It's been a long time. Thank you, Father. Candlestick when it belongs in a pair? Brother, what are you saying? Monsieur, when we saw him, he seemed to be on the run. We wanted to make sure. We found this in his knapsack. I knew it! And he said the priest had given it to him. I see how it is. You felt bound to bring him back, but you are mistaken. You mean we're allowed to let him go? Certainly. Am I really allowed to go? 
You heard? Monsieur? Mad. That's what you are, mad. You could have sent me back. Back to the stink and the pain. Don't forget, don't ever forget, you've promised to become a new man. Promise? Why are you doing this? Monsieur Valjean, my brother, you no longer belong to what is evil. With this silver, I have ransomed your soul from fear and hatred and give you back to God. Forgive me, Father. I've forgotten what it is to feel shame. It's time for you to forgive yourself and the world if you can. Always remember, you no longer belong to what is evil, but to what is good. Now go in peace, Monsieur Valjean. The door here is never locked. Is it my fault you put too much water in the wine and the customers stay away? That's no way for a wife to speak. Wife? I'm more of a workhorse! Mind your mouth or I'll shut it! Oh, you're good at that. I won't pay. They're trying to cheat me. If you won't pay, they won't make deliveries. And if they won't make deliveries, we might as well close up. They've had these bills. Besides, I don't water the wine. I spit in it. Oh. Oh, good day. Oh, good day, madame. Is this the road to Paris? It is. Is that your child? Yes. Oh, I'm fond of, I'm very, very, very fond of children. I have two on my own, both baby girls. Pretty. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl, Cosette. May I hold her? Of course. Oh, thank you. Oh. My name is Thenardier. My husband and I, we run this inn. It's not easy, I don't mind telling you. It's a beautiful place you have here, madame. The air is so clean. The country is a good place for children. None better. Both my babies are Eponine and Azelma. Cosette, Eponine, and Azelma. They might be sisters. Yes. Madame, will you look after my baby for me? Uh, what? I have to find work where I'm going, and it's not easy if you have a child. You have two girls of your own, and as you say, they'd be like sisters. Yeah. She's no trouble at all. She never cries. No one's taught her to smile, but she smiles all the time. She's a happy baby. How much could you pay? I could pay six francs a month. Seven. <laughs> Not less than seven, and six months in advance. My husband. Monsieur? Six times seven makes 42. And an extra 15 for extras. There are always extras for the baby. Has she enough clothes? She has a pretty wardrobe here in the bag. Hmm. Very well. We Come inside, then. We'll settle matters over a glass of wine. Let me have her. Now, don't you worry about a thing, all right? I'll take good care of her. Seven a month. Not bad. 
If she makes the payments. She's better, or else the frat goes into the river. The baby clothes ought to fetch a fair price. I'll sell them tomorrow. Did she mention her husband? <laughs> Did they ever? I'll charge her for all the extras. Make sure that she's always sick. An unending list of treatments <laughs> and the medicine she'll never, never get. get. We have discovered a gold mine, a fountain that never runs dry. We have an income that won't run out as long as. And my back isn't broken. As you call, Madame Victorian, I was caught under the wheels of my own car. Yes, yes. I would have died but for Monsieur Madeleine. Our good mayor has the strength of an ox. The police tried to help, but they couldn't. He slipped in and pushed up with his shoulders until there's enough room to pull me out. You know, you act as if nothing happened in your life before Monsieur Madeleine saved you. And that, Madame, is the way I feel about it. Well, why, my Chalabon? Seeing as the school and the hospital. God bless Monsieur Madeleine. God, God bless Monsieur Madeleine. And the best part is, he has no wife, yet. <laughs> he still is. Monsieur Madeleine is wedded to his work. And we're better off for it. Anyways, they so marry. <laughs> the girl from Paris is not hungry today. She never wants to eat. It's too good to dine with the likes of us. She's used to Paris restaurants. <laughs> there, madame, she's doing it again. She has the cough. She'll infect us all. No, please. It's only a little cough. I must have got a chill. She coughs all the time. Her handkerchief has spots of blood. I've seen them. Why should we work beside her and risk consumption? Besides, she's not a good worker, Madame Victorian. Too slow. I work as fast as anyone. Faster! I've seen 12 necklaces of black beads in an hour, and the necklaces are always perfect. 
She has a child with that Victorian. It's town gossip. A child, but no husband. That's what they say. That's not true. I'll attend to this. It's none of your concern. Leave Mademoiselle Fantine to me. Another Mademoiselle from Paris? They're all the same. Thinking they're better than anyone else. Always like some shy, fine lady instead of a factory where- Enough of that. Go along, all of you. Please, Madame Victorian, don't listen to the gossip. I do not like liars, Mademoiselle. And you are a liar. You do have a child. Your letters to Madame Thenardier have aroused the curiosity of the town. It is my duty to see that this factory harbors nothing that would bring discredit upon Monsieur Madeleine. Well, let me speak with Monsieur Madeleine. He is away. In his absence, I am in complete charge of this factory. I have taken it upon myself to visit the inn run by Madame Thenardier and her husband. I have seen the nasty little girl. You wicked, wicked busybody! Oh, how oh. dare you! I I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Please, Madame Thenardier, you can't discharge me. My daughter's board costs me ten sous a day, and I only make twelve. I have debt. You are a shameful, shameful young woman, mademoiselle. You will leave this factory now. No, please let me stay. I'll work harder than before, and I'll work for less money. I'll manage somehow, and I'll survive. Your sword always does. Be off these premises in five minutes, or I shall send for the police. The police? To work! To work! Oh, Cosette. My poor Cosette.
can't read. You too thick between the ears. <laughs> I'm a scholar. Where's it from? The town of Mal... Malfer... <laughs> Malfer May. She's still there. I liked it better when her letters came from Paris. What difference does it make as long as there's money inside? I always wanted to go to Paris. There's money to be made there. Not a sou. What did she say? <laughs> she says she lost her job. Now you see? What well, luck? See right there? See what I said? She was better off in Paris. Not for us, she wasn't. She made more money in Montfermeil. Mm. Besides, I know how to milk a cow. I'll write to her. What are you going to say? I'll say. I'll say. I'll say Cassette is ill. We need 40 francs for the doctor. But she says she lost her job. Yes, but if she thinks her brat's down with a fever, she'll find work fast enough. No, 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 don't use fever. We used that last year to get 25 francs out of the girl. It won't work a second time. I'll think of something. Leave it to me. You're as crafty as a fox, huh? True enough. Pretty as ants. License expires in two days' time, Mademoiselle Robillard. Yes. You know the law. You cannot sell without a license. See that you get this renewed. Uh, I won't forget. I assure you I will not. The fine is 30 francs for the first offense. Second offense means seven days in prison. I in two days, a new license. I trust so, for your sake. to those who can pay the price. How horrible, the monster! I'd sooner throw myself out a top story window. It's a crime such men are allowed to practice. Hair grows back, but not teeth. What could you have been thinking of? What difference does it make? One week I sell my hair, the next my teeth. God is forgetting me piece by piece. Oh, Fantine. At least you can pay the landlady. <coughs> <coughs> not a, not a suit, no. That cough doesn't get any better. Use a some, use some few francs. See a doctor. Buy some medicine. The money is for Cosette. Cosette, Cosette. Always Cosette. You never think of yourself. But do as you must. But remember, be quiet when you creep up the back stairs. You're a good friend, Marguerite. I do what I can. Here, have a flower on me. Flowers! I have flowers! 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 What are you looking at? Ah, oh, yes. I have seen you before. You used to be quite pretty. Ah, oh, yes. What a sight catching you through the dentist's window. Getting your teeth pulled. <laughs> it was some show. I don't know you. I don't want to know you. Go away. Oh, now, now. That must have just heard something awful. Here, why don't you let me have a look? Yeah, I'm not an animal! <laughs> temper, temper. Leave me alone. I'm warning you. You? Warning me? What a laugh. <laughs> you know, you could be a very rich lady in a fine house. You're the devil. Oh. Ha! Look what I got. Give that back! 
Oh. You mad at me now! Why, you toothless witch! You're right, I'm a witch, you'll prove it! Dare you! You stop it! People are watching us! Let them! That's enough! He, he started it! I most certainly did not! She did! This is police business! You there! What are you looking at? Want me to run you in? Get out of here! Yes, sir. And you, come with me. Move. That's my show. Oh, what's the use? You heard me. Move. Where are we going? Where do you think you'll get six months for this? Six months? Six months in prison. The law is the law. If I drop a stitch. What about my daughter? What right had that man to torment me? Quiet! I, I'm not very well, you see. And when he began to torment me, I lost my temper. Is there no one who saw what happened and can tell you? You're waiting six months for this, and not even Aunt Bishop, Bishop of Paris can alter that. Mercy. Have pity, pity, if not for me, then for my child. Take her away. No, Come on, you. please, get out. Please, no. One moment, if you please. Monsieur Mayor. So you're the mayor, are you? The fine and wonderful Monsieur Mayor You'll get a year for that. Inspector Javert, this woman is to go free. To go free. Release her. Monsieur Mayor, the woman cannot go free. She's insulted a respected citizen in the street. I was crossing the square when you took this woman away. There were still people about when I asked what had happened. I heard the story. The flower girl told me about your daughter. That's Marguerite for you. The law is the law. Your respected citizen was at fault. But she has insulted you too, the mayor of this town. That is my affair. If you'll forgive me, monsieur, the insult was not to yourself, but to justice. And justice is my affair. I'm sorry about what had happened to you at the factory. Why didn't you come to me? Never mind. I will pay for your debts and arrange for your child to be brought to you, or else you may go to her. There's no longer a need for you to stay. You may go. You, you mean what you said about my daughter? My Cosette? Yes. Is such good fortune possible? I have my duties. Don't you require me to send that woman to prison? She'll not spend a single day in prison. There are regulations. I have the authority over them. <laughs> Inspector Javert. What is it? The woman has fainted. <laughs> Take her to the factory infirmary. Tell the good sisters I'll be along. Yes, Monsieur Mayor. Justice will not be mocked. That's enough. I recommend that I be dismissed from my post. What in the world are you talking about? Surely it's an inferior member of the police service has shown the utmost disrespect for a magistrate. Who's the offender? I am. You? Yes. And who does, who's the magistrate? You are. From the first day you came to this town, I had inquiries made. Then there was the incident with Frosch event and the cart. Your great strength. A trifle, perhaps. I suspected you of being a man called Jean Valjean. It is a punishable crime for a convict to assume a false identity. What name? Jean Valjean. He was a prisoner of my time in the prison. He had great physical strength. He was to report every week to the local authorities, but he never did. He broke his parole. He dropped from sight. Anyways. <laughs> I denounced you to the local authorities in Paris. 
What did they say? That I was crazy. They were right. I'm glad you realize it. They must be, since the real Valjean has been found. Has he? Yes. They caught him stealing again. Of course, the fellow denies he's Valjean. Of course. Where is he now? In Dean. The trial is tomorrow. Inspector Javert, you are an honorable man. I want you to stay at your present post. I cannot agree to that. Well, we shall have to see. I cannot shake your hand, monsieur. A magistrate does not shake hands with an informer. When I abused my powers as a police officer, I became nothing less. I shall continue to perform my duties until I've been replaced. Now, if you'll excuse me, monsieur. They buried you, Jean Valjean. But you have risen from the grave. merely a thief who has been caught stealing apples, but a highly dangerous ruffian who has been sought after since his release from Toulon prison. Chavetu. My name is Chavetu. My friends call me Monkey. <laughs> Your name is Jean Valjean. Valjean? No, Chavetu. I call Madame Rondeau to the witness stand. Madame Rondeau has already given her deposition. I wish for the court to be absolutely certain. Very well. Call Madame Rondeau to the witness stand. Madame Rondeau. <coughs> Madame Rondeau? Yes, monsieur. Is there any doubt in your mind that that man is Jean Valjean? None. How can you be so sure? Some years ago, of course, he came to my inn. He resented his pearl papers, and I turned him away. I could never forget that face. I later heard from Mademoiselle Muriel that he had stolen her brother's candlesticks. The, when they arrested him for stealing the apples, I was only too happy to denounce him. He can call himself whatever he wishes, but my eyes never deceive. Thank you for your testimony, Madame Radeau. Is that all? That is all. No more questions? None. As you please. I wish to call the prisoner Bibelet. The prisoner Bibelet. Prisoner Bibelet. Were you in prison with that man? Yes. Is there any doubt in your mind that that man is Jean Valjean? No doubt. There, you have it, Your Honor. He's been identified by one of his own. You wicked. I am one of those people who don't eat every day. I saw the apples, yes, but they're lying on the ground. <laughs> You're clever, Jean Valjean, but not clever enough. Useless to play the village idiot. You have been trapped. You will be sent back to prison and spend the rest of your life there. No! Who spoke? I did. The mayor bought for me. Monsieur Mazin. Yes. I'm honored. You wish to comment on this case. That man is not Jean Valjean. Science. Science. Monsieur Mayor, is this some kind of bizarre joke? The prisoner people has just identified him. When a prisoner becomes a witness for the court, he's paid 25 sous a day. He eats well, and he is released from his hard labor for the duration of the trial. A thousand prisoners would swear this thing when it fell over Jean Valjean, and justice would have nothing to do with it. Monsieur Mayor, you astonish me. But Madame Rondeau has also identified the accused. I heard. Take back. I carried a sack over one shoulder. Your inn had a bell above its desk. It was broken. I banged on the table and cried out, Landlord! You told me your husband had recently died, and you asked me where I was from. When I said to go on, you became suspicious. I said, the law requires me to show you my parole papers, and you became alarmed. Oh, if only my poor husband were still alive. And you told me to get out, or you would scream until the police came to evict me. You remember, I had a prison, prison tattoo on one arm. This tattoo marks me. Prisoner of the state, criminal, outcast, convict, convict, convict. Calm yourself, Monsieur Mayor. Send for Monsieur Muriel. Send for the town priest. He will know me. Monsignor Muriel has been dead for some years, Monsieur Mayor. So be it. I will not have another man sent to prison, my police. You do remember. Uh, I, I... Look at my eyes, my face. I wasn't always a gentleman. You had a bird in a wicker cage. You called it 
Butterfly. It's two! It's two! It's Jean Valjean! I am Jean Valjean! I am Jean Valjean! Alex! Alex, it's right! See? I know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Enough from you. Monsieur Mer, do you realize what you're saying? Do you realize what you have done? I realize another man will not be sent to prison in my place. I'm at your disposal. I'll trouble the Cardinal further. If I'm not to be arrested at once, I will leave. I have other things to attend to. The Cardinal's who I am and where I stay. He can send for me whenever it chooses. And me? What about me? You are acquitted. I don't understand. This trial is ended. Convent. It's just not possible! Have you heard? Have you heard? Yes, yes, we've heard. Who hasn't? What will become of the school and the factory and the hospital? I still think there's been some mistake. Monsieur Manline saved my life. I would have died but for him. We don't want to hear about that now. Have they arrested him? They will. What a disgrace for our town. Monsieur Madeleine has brought shame to us all. When people ask me where I'm from, I shall lie. So will I. Why don't we go to the police and find out what's happening? Do you think they'll put him in chains? He's a criminal, isn't he? Isn't that where such creatures belong? In chains? They say he's murdered people. They say he's been vicious all his life. Probably. Freedom, only for those who keep the law. Power to punish those who disobey. possible for a man to sprout horns overnight. Cosette, you must keep calm, my child. You're very ill. Oh, it's you, sister. I was dreaming Cosette was with me. Sleep. Tomorrow is Christmas Day. Christmas Day? I have forgotten. Imagine such a thing. Forgetting Christmas. <coughs> Settle wants for nothing. Oh, what am I thinking? I'm getting better. I'm sure there's nothing seriously wrong with me. Because that won't recognize me. She'll, she'll have forgotten about her mother. The children have such sh short memories. Do you think she'll be pretty? <coughs> Mademoiselle, thank 
team from us. It'll be a common grave for that one. Where is he? Who, Inspector? Don't try to protect him! The mayor! He's not here. He was here. Yes. Do you know where he's gone? No. You'd have been better off if you had gone to prison. I will find you, Valjean. You will not escape his Javert. I know how your mind works. You lived in a prison, but I was born in one. We both stink of the gutter, but I'm washing away that stink. Justice will not be mocked. You will never be free, no matter how long it takes. A year, two, ten, I will hound you to death. I will sink my teeth in and never let go. Ah, there you are. When I sit in the Luxembourg Gardens, I forget everything. So peaceful. It is now ten years later. Paris. The threads of our story interweave like the threads of a tapestry. Jean Valjean has Cosette with him, but she has not yet learned to ask questions. As far as Cosette is concerned, Monsieur Leblanc is the father. Monsieur Leblanc is what he now calls himself. Valjean changes his name as often as he changes his address. This is, this is the office of Inspector Javert. He is transferred to the Paris Division some months ago. He has never given up his pursuit of Jean Valjean, but at the moment he has no idea his quarry is so close. This is a busy time for Javert. The smell of revolution is in the air. In that wretched tenement house resides the family Thénardier. The end was lost years ago, and it now exists solely by the wits. In the same way, rats in the past still has managed to exist. Or should I say, survive? Monsieur Thénardier now calls himself Jean Rat. Aha, this is an entirely different matter. The house of Madame Gillemont, spinster daughter of the old relic of another age, Monsieur Gillemont. Rich, arrogant, selfish. That young man is the nephew, Maris, her only living, living relative. Two such as these could not be more different. France is in great danger. Day by day, liberty suffers. Frenchmen, listen to the voice of reason. I'm surprised Mr. Latome is. I forgot the time. You don't deceive me, nephew. Deceive? When a young man who has never before displayed interest in flowers and manicured lawns suddenly becomes a nature lover, well, that is to say, what are you trying to say, Aunt? There must be a young lady in the picture. <laughs> You're perceptive, Aunt. There is a young lady, yes. And what is her name? Cassette. And when you are together, what do you talk about? I talk of love. <laughs> Cassette talks of her father. He guards her as if she were made of spun gold. So far, we have had only stolen moments. You've missed your calling, Mays. You should have been a poet. Oh. Because that makes me feel like a poet. What is that you're hiding behind your back? What am I hiding? Please don't hurt my words. What is it, a love letter? Hmm? No. Well, whatever it is, may I see it? Uh, <clears throat> as you wish. These treasonous, seditious writings in your possession. I only look at you to see your father. I've asked you before, Aunt. Please, please do not criticize my father to me. And this is my house. I can do as I wish. My late brother was a fool. My father was a heroic soldier who gallantly served the Republic. Republic? How I hate that word. Burns my tongue to say it. Your father and all those who served the Republic were traitors to their lawful king. They were murderers, anarchists, and villains. That's enough. It's obvious, Aunt, that an aristocrat like yourself and a man who champions freedom cannot live under the same roof. We've been over this before, Marius, too many times. I've made up my mind. Where will you live? How will you support yourself? That is my concern. Oh, like father, like son. I take that as a high compliment. If my father was here now, he would have a pamphlet in his hand. Long for the Republic. Correct! You go too far! Foolish boy. The rats are hungry. Millions are hard of work. Join us in protest. This Sunday, Boulevard.
about the mop. If we don't get satisfaction, to the barricades. To the barricades. Take a pamphlet. Read it. Study it. Don't stick your heads in the sand. Let them go, Adele. It's too nice a day for a revolution. Paris anyway. is about to explode. To tell you the truth, I'd much rather sit at a cafe table and drink a nice glass of red wine. All right, then. Let's. Have any money? Do I ever? You. Flat. Look, it's Marius. Marius! Just in time to help us handle these pamphlets. <laughs> you and your pamphlets. I sympathize with your cause, Henry, but I don't think I'm ready to work on it yet. Dilettante. Perhaps. <laughs> so how are you getting on without your aunt's help? I'm not helpless, Adele. I'm translating from Latin to French, French to German, German to Latin. <laughs> So, have you found a place to live yet? <laughs> yes. A small tenement house down by the river. It's the best I could afford. I know a second-hand dealer who will buy you a spare pair of trousers. I know a clockmaker who will buy your watch. I'm poorly paid, but I can live on what I make. In that case, could you lend me a few sous? We'll all have some wine. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone. Your little Cosette, who walks with her father, how do you manage to get close? Oh. I leave a note on this bench. A time and place to meet. Clumsy, I admit, but so far it worked. Bravo. <laughs> Tip a glass for me. Wow. Look, two glasses each, Adele. I can't believe your aunt cut you off. <laughs> she tried to send me money, but I refuse to accept it. When she writes, I don't reply. Lunatic? He's right. You are a lunatic. Are you sure you won't join us? Look, she's here. We're not needed here. It's a beautiful day, isn't it, Father? Yes, my angel. Excuse me, Monsieur. Mademoiselle, won't you take this bench? How kind of you. You were here first, young man. Besides, the gods have more than enough empty benches. Here. Oh, but this one's in the sunshine, Father. I've seen you walking here every day, so you are no stranger to me. Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Gilles Namad. My father was a famous soldier in the public. Perhaps you've heard of him. No. Oh. My Christian name is Marius. Good day, Monsieur. seemed anxious to intrude. If you ever see him again, Cosette, ignore him. Do you understand? Yes, father. Always be wary of strangers. You haven't spoken with him? You haven't encouraged him in some way? Please, monsieur. You remember me? Only last week you gave me money for bread. My family lived another day because of your charity. Don't listen to her, monsieur. She is a, a tramp. <laughs> if you give her money, you'll never be rid of her. Father can't resist when some is in need. This seems to be a day for notes. <clears throat> Excuse me for sending my daughter instead of myself. The last insufficiency of my wardrobe prevents me from going out. If you'd be so kind as to accompany my daughter, you'll be a witness of a shattered life. P.S. Even as little as 40 sous would help. Such notes are scattered like confetti. <laughs> What a sad letter. You're not going with the child, Monsieur Leblanc. I want to see the true, truth or lie of this note. <clears throat> Take us at home. I don't want to be long. Follow me, Monsieur. Yes, yes. He's such a good man, my father. Even a good man can have his throat cut in a dark alley. Surely you mustn't say such things. I know Paris, Mademoiselle Cotet. You do not. Next door is my family. I'm your neighbor. 
Yes, I know. <laughs> We're a noisy family. <laughs> I won't argue. The walls are thin and cracked. My name is Ebony. The landlady told me your name. Nay. Is there something you want? Um, uh, books! <laughs> I can read. Write, too. A mirror. You have a mirror. I can look pretty when I have something proper to wear and my, and my face is scrubbed. <gasps> Bread! Go ahead, have some. <laughs> Mm. Mm. It's fresh. We only got stale, and only when times are good. I've forgotten the taste. Last winter, before coming here, we lived beneath bridges. We had to huddle together not to freeze. Sometimes, sometimes I, I wanted to drown myself, but then I thought, no, it's it's, it's too cold. Sometimes I, I'd stay it until it's dawn. Sometimes I thought people were throwing stones at me. When you haven't had something to eat in a very long time, the world seems a, a very strange place. I'm sorry, Ebony, but I must attend to my work. We're being turned out. We're behind in our rent. How much does it come to? 20 francs. First Henri, and now you. If this keeps on coming up, I'm afraid I'll be driven back to my aunt. I have 30 francs. I'll give you 25. 25? 20 for the rent, five for some food. Five francs is enough to stop us for two days. I trust you won't make this a habit. My money goes out faster than it comes in. Um, what are you waiting for? I was just thinking, monsieur. You're not only generous. You're a good-looking young man. <laughs> you have a whip the skin off your back. He's coming, I tell you. He better be. He'll be here any minute. You haven't missed your mark? He's the man who gives money to the beggars. He gave me money last week. I told you about him. On Sundays, he gives away coins outside the church. Yes, I remember. He must be a Rothschild the way he spends. Pay attention! Ah, oh, Father, you're hurting me! When this rich fool gets here, cough a little. Look sad. Misery makes money. Understood? I'll look miserable, I promise, but let me go. Remember my words, Isama. May I come in? You may, sir, in honor. Do sit down. The stool wobbles a bit, but it's the best I can offer. <coughs> My youngest daughter told me of your kindness. Poor thing. Without some doctor's care and some good food, she'll surely be gone come summer. Large family? Yes, too large, I'm afraid. Times have not been good to me. Often I say to myself, Ah, Jondrette, you might as well end it. Better a quick death than a slow one. Another daughter has cut her foot badly. It is black and swollen. My little boy has run away. My wife is ill. Poor thing. She got up this morning and went to the streets to see if she could beg us something to eat. <coughs> you see how it is. If we do not have the rent paid by tonight, it's the streets for Jean-Rette and family. Four francs is all I have on me at the moment. I left home without my wallet. The rent must be paid by eight. Then I come at six and pay you 60 francs. <laughs> this evening, then. Six o'clock. Precisely. You are a fine gentleman, sir. Oh, if only you had known me in better days. Why, we might have been friends. <clears throat> well, this evening, then? Yes. Don't forget your wallet. All right.
looking for you? I'm sorry, I... I saw some... Um, I saw... Never mind. Well, I told you he was rich. Oh. Uh, 60 francs is nothing. 60 francs? He's gonna give us 60 francs? Are you nuts? That's a fortune! You stupid woman! He was a man from the inn. Did you recognize him? What? what? Think <laughs> back. Ten years back. The inn. The man who came for cassette. The one who paid 1,500 francs to take her away. The man who they said was the mayor of Montferme? He was the mayor. He was. If I had known that when he came for cassette, the price would have been 10,000, 20. But he disappeared. They said he died. I don't care what others say. He is the mayor. He is the escaped convict. He's gonna be rich. Okay, okay there's seven. 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 Stop dancing I need to think. What if he doesn't pay up? He'll pay for silence. I'll keep him on the hook forever. You see that ring on his finger? Oh, yeah. Worth plenty. He might put up a struggle. That's right. If he puts up a struggle, we'll break his neck and throw him in the river. <laughs> Pretty girl in the park, the one he's always with. What about her? She wears lovely clothes. Sometimes flowers in her hair. Flowers. Do you think she might be Cosette? Cosette? That brat! Where he clean clothes while my daughters were rags? Go find Ephemie. We have work to do. No matter what, I get the wallet, the ring, and the watch. They said that the superintendent wasn't here, but they said that if it was urgent, I could speak with the inspector in charge. I am the inspector in charge, Javert. What do you want? I rent quarters belong to the building, building in Madame Minette. I know the building. My neighbor, he's a very hard man, unpleasant to his family. He forces his wife and daughters to beg. They pass notes to people in the streets. Your neighbor's name is Jondrette, a petty criminal. You're well informed, Inspector. I know my job. Continue. He plans to rob some man coming to his room. Do you know the victim? No, but I've overheard John Drett discussing with his wife that if the man puts up a struggle, he planned to kill him. Was any time mentioned? Oh, um, six o'clock. I will attend to the matter. Half past four. If you take my advice, Inspector, you won't go alone. I repeat, Monsieur, I know my job. But one thing before you leave. Yes? Your name? Mary Stillenomad. Stillenomad. An honorable name. A word of advice, Monsieur. It is not wise to have radical friends. The Luxembourg Gardens are no place for talk to the barricades. Your eyes are everywhere, Inspector. As are my ears. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Not far from Montferme. Now do you recognize us? No more than before. You're a cool one, but it won't work. It was Christmas Eve. You were disguised wearing an old overcoat. We thought you were a tramp. I recognize you the minute you shove your face in this room. As though butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. Pay up, Monsieur Madeleine. I could go to the police. Ha! You can't play that game. It's you the police are after, not us. The money, or I call in my dangerous neighbors, and they'll work you over for a franc apiece. They're good at breaking noses. You won't recognize yourself in the mirror. <laughs> if you cry out, Madame Thenardier, I will snap your husband's spine. How's that? <gasps> One cry, Madame, and you are a widow. Listen to me well, both of you. If you are to bring any unhappiness to my angel, to my cosette, I will seek you out together, or one by one, and slit your throats. For myself, I care nothing. For Cosette, I care more than you could ever hope to understand. Please, Monsieur, let him go, I beg you. I did not survive as not to deal with a deal with scum like you. The choice is yours. The police are here. We're in for it. What do we say? What do we do? I don't want to go to jail. Uh, Shut up, you wretched <coughs> girl. This is all your fault. You brought that benefactor here. And you told me to. 
You'll be all right. Up to your old tricks, eh, Jean Dredd? We've done nothing wrong. The man who ran out, who was he? Well, how should I know? Somebody who had too much money for his own good. Why did he run off like that? Why didn't he cry out? Perhaps he didn't want to meet the police. Devil take it! He must have been the best of the lot. I wasn't afraid we were, would be here. It's not easy to leave the house without my father seeing me. I don't like to deceive him. You haven't told him about us. No. He doesn't think I have anyone, not even a friend. We've always lived that way, moving from place to place, never staying long. Oh, Marius. What is it? What's wrong? We're going away. What? Where? Father says we must leave France. He's getting passage for England. But, but why? Why must you leave France? He seems terribly worried about <clears throat> something. Oh, oh, what does it matter? We're leaving and that's that. No. No. I won't have it. I know what must be done. What can be done? I'll ask my aunt's permission to marry you. Do you mean it? Is such a thing possible? Of course. Your father will have to understand. A man and a wife cannot be separated.
I'll be here, Marius. I'll see you to your house. I hope my father won't object. They'll both agree. You'll see. My aunt and your father both. forgiven. Then why have you come? You never answer my letters and you spurn my money. I assure you, Aunt, that from now on, I'll write to you every day. Or at least every week. As for money, I have a great need of it. You're not gambling, are you? That's a sure road to ruin. I don't gamble. Unless you consider marriage a gamble. Marriage? I told you about the girl. What do you really know of the creature? I know that I love her, and that she loves me, and that we have no wish to be separated. But I've seen poverty, and what it does to people. Please, we must have money. Then go to her family. She has only her father, and I cannot speak to him. Well, I will not pretend to be annoyed, Marius. No. You are still young and naive. I am a woman of the world, and I understand such matters. In fact, this corset might be good for you, but in time, a suitable arrangement to a suitable young girl can be made. One with her own wealth and from a good line. A good line? I wish to marry Cassette, not a racehorse. Be sensible, Marius. I repeat, I wish to marry Cassette. Never. If you cannot live without the creature, make her your mistress, but do what? Never! Oh. A few weeks ago, you insulted my father to me. Tonight, you insulted my future wife. I'm sorry to have troubled you. I shall ask nothing more of you. Marius! Oh, Marius, wait! Oh, what have I done? No, he'll never come back. Marius! <sighs> Follow me. If we stay together, we'll win the day. Oh, it's you. Have you come to join the fight? Your kids are going up? Yes. Aren't you afraid of getting killed? No. You have a button off your jacket. I'll mend it for you. <laughs> if you're not afraid of death, why should I be? Marius, I knew we could count on you. Don't just sit there. There's work to be done. They're getting closer. No, monsieur. Battles like these are for gentlemen like you. You look so sad. I wish there was something I could do for you. There is. Promise me you won't fail me. Whatever it is, I promise. Any minute now, a young woman will come here looking for me. She comes here with her father every day. You were with her last night. Here. You, you saw us together? Sometimes. Sometimes I watch you when you don't know I'm there. But. But why? Oh, never mind. There isn't much time. Tell her that my aunt refuses her permission. We cannot marry. Tell her that if I can't have her for my wife, life is meaningless to me. Marius, what are you waiting for? We need you. I can see her. You won't forget. I'm not a child. But if she's to be here in a moment, why not wait and tell her yourself? We'll never see each other. Not in this life, anyways. Come on. Oh. 
for your troubles. Let's go. Hurry. I don't want your money. Marius? I have a message for you, mademoiselle. For Monsieur Marius. You are a friend of his? A neighbor. And what? What is the message? His aunt refuses her permission. He cannot marry. He says, he says if he cannot have you for his wife, life is meaningless. Where has he gone? To meet his death, like the rest of us on the barricade. I'll take you home. You never should have come here. I warned you about that young man. I love him. No, you don't. You can help him, save him. After living all these years, suffering all that can be suffered, growing old without ever being young, living no wife or friends, after returning kindness for cruelty and good for evil, Am I to lose my angel, and with her, all my happiness, everything we've ever had, just because some young idiot has captured her heart? I love him. This is the moment I've always dreaded. Go home. If I can, I'll save your memories. Not one of us. 
last, he's a police spy. Who? That one. Henri, did you hear that? The girl's a liar. I'm not a police officer. His name is Javert, Inspector Javert. What Evening says is true. Search him. He must have some form of identification. There is no need. I am Inspector Javert. <gasps> what? We better lock him up, Henry. Are you mad? He's a police spy. He'll point his finger at each one of us if the battle goes against us. Adele's right. He must be executed. I'm an old soldier of the public. Let me have the honor of executing the spy. This is war. You may execute him. Come with me. Everybody back. After all these years, after all my searching, it ends here. The hunted has become the hunter. I underestimated you, Valjean. Take your revenge. A knife would suit you better than a rifle. You are free to go. I don't suppose I shall leave here alive, but if I do, you can find me number seven, Rue de Home. I call myself Monsieur Leblanc. Why are you doing this? I made a promise some years ago. I failed at my duties. I'd rather you killed me. You're free to go. Clear out. It's done. I've killed him. Okay, guys. You're free to go. You can find me at number seven route alone. Who is Valjean to give me my life? Who allowed him such authority over me? What purpose can life hold when a man such as I is confused? What is justice? What is injustice? You have confused me, Valjean. You have taken a life that had no room for doubt and made doubt a part of it. You give me my life? You give Javert nothing? I thank you for nothing, Valjean. Damn you. Concept of mercy. He was exasperated by it. He was not used to confronting the unknown. The unexpected in human nature was beyond him. He was wholly at a loss. In what was he to believe? He walked to the railing high above the river. He leaned forward and dropped into the darkness. There was a, there was a splash, and that was all. At Madame Guillemot's, the picture is much happier. Matters survived. Valjean escaped the police by traveling through the Paris tours and depositing his burden on the aunt's doorstep. In only a few weeks, he was fully recovered. Life goes on. Say nothing. I think the doctors are wrong. He is dying of a broken heart. That is his sickness. Mm. Thank you for coming. You will tell her? I must return to my guests. Oh, there isn't much time. Monsieur. She must speak to you. 
It's Charlotte. I've already spoken with her. No, no, not Charlotte. This one's different. I don't like the looks of her. She's very insistent, though. She'll never go away unless you talk to her. What was I just say? I hardly expected to see you again, Madame Jondre. By the looks of you, you look like you made it to the top of the world. Hmm. I understand you and your husband made profits by robbing the plotties at the barricades. A vicious rumor, but you shouldn't say such things. Besides, my boy and Eponine were both killed at the barricades. What do you want? I have some information to sell. Whatever it is, I'm not interested in that. You will be. It's about your father-in-law. You gold coins will seal my lips forever. You see, me and my husband are leaving France, and we're going to enter the slave trade. There's a lot of money to be made in the slave trade. <laughs> barricades come up, and barricades go down. But you and your husband managed to sink it to the top. My father-in-law is close to dying. The reason why he's not here is because I asked him not to. Ah, so then you know that he is the ex-convict? I understand that he murdered Inspector Javert. Calling it execution changes nothing. That is why he is not welcome here. I thank him for saving my life. I thank him for all he has done for my wife. But I cannot be friends with a murderer. So smug, you're a fool. Get out! Your wife's father didn't murder anyone. Javert drowned himself. Everyone knows that. I, I haven't heard. I was ill for so long. Can it be true? Don't take my word for it. Go to the police. They'll tell you. There you are. Everyone's waiting. It's time to cut the cake. Tell the footman at the front door to give you one gold coin. That is all you'll be getting from this house. You're generous. And Madame Gillamo? Yes? You don't recognize me, do you? Should I? Perhaps. It's better this way. Who is she? Never mind about her. Cassette, listen to me. I've done your father a great injustice. The reason why he's not here is because I've asked him not to come. What do you say? He doesn't come here because he's very ill. I would have postponed the wedding, but he wouldn't hear of it. Charlotte was here a moment ago. I wasn't going to tell you. He's worse. He's dying, Cassette. Then we must go to him. We must go to him together. Come close to. I've done you a great disservice. Whatever you think you've done, it's over. How sweet it is to die like this. You must enjoy life, children. Cosette, I've, less, I've left for you two candlesticks on the mantel. They're made of silver, but to me, they're made of gold. You must bury me in any plot of ground that comes in handy and put a stone to mark the spot. I want no name on the stone. No name. That is my wish. If my angel, Cosette, cares to visit sometimes, I shall be glad. Father? <laughs>
He got his wish. The stone was quite unadorned, but many years ago someone chalked four lines of verse on it. By now the wind and weather have done the worst, and the lines have vanished entirely. He sleeps, although so much he was denied. He lived, and when his dear love left him, died. It happened of itself in the calm way, that in the evening night, time follows day. You've earned your rest. Sleep well, Jean Valjean. Thank four people who have dedicated a lot of time and energy to this production and to us, and we are very grateful for them. First of all, to Mrs. Herrick. <laughs> Most of the costumes that you see in front of you were made by her, uh, with a bit of help from Rachel. <laughs> and it was so well but Just a bit. She has coordinated them all, and I think that we look great. So. <laughs> wandering around in black t-shirts like this one. This is their and the fourth person, but least most of all, we would like to thank is Miss Limit. <laughs> Thank you. 